I have been here. The Grey Goose, Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. Successful as I was in securing Lady Hadley's emeralds, circumstances dictated that I should hand them over to Scotland Yard. <laughs> and thus, I got nothing. However, altruistically, it was a triumph. Now let me tell you something of the next little fracas in which I was involved, without any of my seeking. I was on my way home from my club one night, about the stroke of twelve. <coughs> Never even stopped to see what happened, the lout. I say, are you all right? Yes, sir. I think so. A bit knocked about. Well, of course. The car practically threw you across the pavement. Just missed completely running you down. Oh, no, it, it was only an accident. Accident? My foot. The driver mounted the sidewalk and practically collected you. But... How you escaped, I can't imagine. Here, let me help you. Did you get his number? No. You, you see, I hadn't time. I... Really, I, I'm only a little shaken. I, I feel much better now. I'm sure it was just someone a little under the weather. Driving badly. Oh, oh Lord, she's fainted. Oh, now what? Uh, look, uh, look, look here. Don't do that. God bless my soul. The same car. Hey, you! Do you see what? Well, I'm jiggered. Huh, miss, thank goodness. Hey, you, wake up. We've just been shot at. Confound you, wake up. We can't stay here all night. Next time that car comes round, we'll be cold meat. Next stop, the mortuary. Now, now, look, pull yourself together. Huh? Well, what is it? What is it, she asks. This is what it is, my lass. You, uh, we, are being shot at. And if my watch is right, we'll be shot at again in one more minute, unless we get going. Yes, yes, L let's, let's go. At once. At last you said something sensible. Come on, this spot is unhealthy. Lean on me. I've, I've nowhere to go. Oh, it's like that, is it? Oh, please, don't misunderstand me. I, well, of course I have a home, but they know where that is. The result will be the same. I see. Well, look, for a little while we'll go somewhere else. Like to trust yourself to me for now? Well, it'll be better than being shot down in the street, won't it? Eh? Oh, yes. Bit of a backhanded compliment, though. Still, under the circumstances, I'll make no further comment. Walk so far with me, we'll find a taxi, drive to a certain address, and I'll introduce you to a lady. A lady? Definitely. Look here, my girl, I've had this. Stay in the street and get run over or shot down, I don't care which, or else accept what help I can give you, and shut up. I'm very sorry, but... I know what you mean by but. Now, do as I say, or take what's coming round the corner at any moment. I'll trust you. Thank you. At the moment, I haven't a car, nor a Tommy gun in my pocket, so, as the lesser of two evils, follow me to a taxi. Here she comes. In here, behind this door. Now they can't hit us. Good. They didn't see us that time. All right, step it out, round the next corner. We definitely can't stay in this street. That car is going to play circuses until they do get you. Us. Right now, run, and run like blazes. Huh. That'll be enough, I think. Oh, I do hope so. It's <clears throat> very hard running in dancing shoes and an evening frock. I quite appreciate the difficulty. But if men start shooting in my direction, I run. Even if I'm just about to tow the line in a sack race. At any rate, no car can get down this narrow passage so we can afford to walk a little till we get to a main thoroughfare. Proceed. Where are you taking me? I did have an idea, but just at the moment I am wondering whether second thoughts wouldn't be best. And so far I haven't gotten it. Can I trust you? I can't see any alternative. And just now you said you would. Look here, my lass. Someone's trying to bump you off, and you know it. You just said you dare, dare go to your own home. Yes, that's true. Stop. Quick, listen. We are being followed. Nonsense. Just some belated traveller like ourselves. Wait on. The steps have ceased. Well, then let's walk on and see if we can hear them again. 
Now listen carefully. Stop walking. You're right. Well, we'll have to inquire into this. Apparently your car friends lost us, but one, or maybe more, have tried walking, probably combing this area. He... Oh, that is, they are determined to find me. Well, I know a very good way to stop them. Now, round the corner and jump into the first doorway. That's good. Now, hold your breath and listen. Stay put. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, have you a light? Eh? Why, certainly, I... Thanks. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's that. All right, Miss, um, what's your name? You can come out. You, you cracked him. I did. And if you're a cook or a parlour maid in disguise, that's one follower the less. Here, hold my torch a moment while I take a look see. Recognise him? I'm certain I've never seen him in my life. Right on. I'll see what he's got in his pockets. Hmm, very little. Small amount of change and... Great Scott, what's this? Oh, a little wallet. Open it. Huh, a little wallet, she says. My dear refugee, it is a little wallet. An official one with card of identification inside. Holy Moses, what have I done? Well, what have you done? I've donged one Jonathan service, knocked him cold. Jonathan is a police inspector from headquarters. <sighs> what do we do now? Run like the very devil till we reach the Gobi Desert or some other very, very far spot. <sighs> My hat, this exercise is more than I can stand. I'm not too good at it myself. What now? Aye, and here's the rub. As I said before, I'm going to take you to a place of safety. Oh, thank you. But I don't know you, and for the moment I'd rather you didn't know where it was. But I... All right. We can ease up now. You are being followed by some pretty low types, and one day, should they catch up with you, it appears very likely they might screw the address out of you. I think I see your point. Well, what do you propose? This. That I blindfold you. Oh, I don't think I like the idea at all. Well, in that case, sorry you've been troubled. Oh, no, no, don't go. I... I said I'd trust you. You're wise. So here's a perfectly unused hanky, and we'll start the blind man's buff game, eh? Comfortable? Yes, thank you. Good. Now, just about ten minutes of exercise, and we'll be temporarily out of the wood. In the meantime, you can be telling me your name and a few other particulars, eh? We are in a lift. Definitely. Take my arm again. They're almost there. And what's that? Oh, um, only a buzzer. Someone waiting for the lift, I expect. Now we're at the door. Enter, madame. Thank you. I'll have to ask you to keep the blindfold on a moment longer. Where's the, the lady you were going to introduce me to? Yes, open up the gadget, then dim the lights. Now we can remove the bandage. Oh, what a relief. Let me thank you for playing fair. I watched you very carefully. You didn't cheat. Neither did you. I'm grateful. <laughs> now, this is Miss Barbara Favisham. Can we trust this lady? I'm certain of it. She's Miss Janet Joyce, and we've got to help her. If I am not mistaken, she's in a lot of strife. I'm very certain of it. Janet Joyce, I've heard of you somewhere. Probably. I'm a cabaret artist at Max Spellman's Arcadia. Oh, I see. Yes, I thought I knew the name. But what's the trouble? Look, Barbara, give me your ears and I'll tell you the story of the night's adventures and how Roland, uh, <clears throat> Sir Galahad, rescued a maiden in distress. Well, you did have a narrow escape, Miss Joyce. What about me? I'm still trembling. My dear, don't take any notice of him. Bullets just bounce off him. Yes, and what about me jobbing a senior police officer on the jaw? Oh, yes, that is serious. Do you think he saw your face? No, I was on him too quickly. What of his wallet and identification card? My hat! I forgot to put it back in his pocket. I've still got it. Here it is. Jonathan's service. Hmm. You'll have to find some means of returning it at once. I will, won't I? But forget it for a moment. I'm anxious to get to the bottom of Janet's trouble. Let's have it, Janet. I really don't know what it is myself. I can't think I did anything wrong. I'd just finished my last song, and 
As I left the orchestra stand, my dress swept a little heart-shaped disc at my feet. It was Ivorine, so I picked it up and slipped it into my corsage and went to my dressing room. I'd no sooner put on my coat than there was a bang on the door and Max Spellman came in in a tearing rage. Come on, you. Give it to me. Is there any necessity for you to come bursting in here without knocking? This is my dressing room. Don't get fussy. Just hand over what you picked up on the stage, my girl. Mr. Spellman, I don't like your manner at all. Manner or no manner. You were seen by Art Jennings, the saxophone player, to pick up something off the orchestra stage. Now, what was it? Come on, show it to me. Well, if you'll kindly get out of my dressing room, I'll return it. You see, I, I think it slipped down a little way, and I'll have to disrobe. Get it now. Do you hear? I'm not giving you a chance to sidestep me. Now, listen. You do as I say... Or shall I come and get it for myself? Don't you dare. As you're blocking the door, I, I'm leaving by the window. And I'm not coming back. Come back, you fool. Ah, Jacobs, get that girl. Get her for me. Dead if necessary, but get her. And so, yet another adventure brings Roland Fletcher into fresh excitement. This is something that always appeals to the Grey Goose. 